Hello, hello. Welcome to Watercolor Postcards with Amy Jackson. Um, this is pre-recorded, so it's not letting me flip my camera around. Um, but what you're going to need is a uh, four, four by four and a half to six and a half inch postcards that we'll be using. Um, I'm using watercolor paper. I'm just using the Canson paper nine by 12 cut down into four pieces. Um, and then whatever watercolor set you have, I'll be using um, my normal palette here. It's already pretty used, I'll probably have to clean that. Um, some different size paint brushes, a cup of water, and a uh, paper towel <clears throat> um, to be able to clean your paintbrush off and whatnot. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the way we'll do this is we'll probably paint a little bit on one and then come back to um, it, it later to finish it up. So that way it has some drying time. We'll do a little bit of wet on the wet, wet on the dry, maybe a little bit of hand lettering. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use a little bit of painter's tape. You can always draw this out, but I thought I'd show this. Now I'm going to block out a little section. I always like to do one of these because I think it's great. And we'll just do a little, last time I did like a blow art, um, one on my video. And you can do as big of a round and I kind of didn't tape that super even because I'm trying to get in my video. Um, arrange that a little bit better so it's trying to go parallel with the edge of my paper. Um, so that'll have to be good enough. <clears throat> so what that's going to do is that's called a mask and it's going to block the paint from going in that area. And we're all done painting and it's dry. We'll lift it up and it'll leave a white space that we can then um, use for, for boarding. Sorry, my brain is going with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up some color. Um, and the way my palette is set up, is I've got a whole bunch of different colors. Um, it, you can see some of these look like they're almost out, but believe it or not, those still have a lot of life left in them. If your palette's dirty, you can just clean it up. This is a little bit of a stain from when I, um, I did a little bit of acrylic in here one day when I was out of space and it kind of made my palette same, but that's okay. Um, so I'm just cleaning everything out to kind of have a fresh start. And I'm going to get some water first with my paintbrush. And you always kind of want to start with fresh water, but it, you'll be amazed at how uh, easy it is. And I'm going to start with um, some blue. And I'm just making... So I don't have a lot of room on my thing. So I'm making a nice little blue petal. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make some really, switching out to a smaller paintbrush since my area to paint is not that big. I'm going to make some little pretty blue flowers. So I'm just starting off with almost like a, a rounded triangle. And I'm going to do four little... little um, petals and then I'm going to do some everywhere and so they're pretty small so I'm going to kind of have it coming off the edge here and then do one over here so it's just like painting four little triangles with the, the ends pointed in it's okay if in a, they don't have to be perfectly round if you go a little bit bigger or smaller, that's good too. Um, these make great birthday cards or thank you cards um, or just a hello postcard. You can even come off the edge. And you can really do any kind of design on these. The, the idea is you really kind of want to just cover the whole area though with with some sort of design, whether it's color, florals, leaves, um, and different things like that. So while I've still got some blue on my paintbrush, I'm going to mix some green in and I'm going to start adding some, some foliage, some green edge. So I'm going to come out from the edge here. I'm just doing some 
the leaves. I can make them curve around. Just add in some leaves. I can add more if I need to. It's pretty cute. And maybe I'll do one kind of coming from up here. And it just can be random. You can make it come from the bottom. Um, if you're Florals are still wet. Make sure you don't put your finger on them. <clears throat> and I'm going to I'm gonna come in from the bottom here too. So this is just going to be the first layer, and I'm just pretty much doing some circles here of um, our paint. And while that is drying, we'll come back and add more. I'll set it aside to let it dry a little bit. I'll go ahead and get my next color, postcard, I mean. And I really like this blue. I wish I could remember which blue it is. I've kind of switched out the blues in my palette just based on what I have. Um, it's really pretty blue, but any blue will work. Um, and I might get a little bit of Prussian blue in there just to kind of kill it. So we're going to do another little mountain scene. I did one last time with kind of thicker mountains. These are going to be very kind of light and airy, and hopefully it will kind of create a nice, fun edge to it. So I'm going to start with pretty light in the background, and they're going to be a little bit peakier. So they're going to be a lot looser and kind of overlapping. And then when I get that drawn out, I'm going to really water it down, but I'm also not filling it in all the way. I am just leaving some whiteness in it. And then I kind of like to dip it in the pure color and while it's still wet, touch some of that darker blue in there. You can even probably do the next layer. We'll try. We might have to come back and add some things, actually. So I want to cut that into there. I might have one coming in here. We'll just go ahead and paint a little bit and we'll, we'll get it started. We might have to come back. So this layer is going to be a little bit darker and we'll come back in and define that edge even more later. So I might get a little more Prussian blue in my color to do this one. So, so that's bleeding in. I, I should have waited a little bit for it to dry, but that's part of the line, um, is knowing so this is this is just kind of a little quick, very sketchy start to the mountain scene. So since I'm having some issues with the bleeding of the colors um, and the difference between the scapes, I'm going to the edge, the ridges. I mean, I'm going to set that aside and let that dry. All right, now I am going to do. Um, we'll start a little lemon, and I thought this would be fun just because you know we're in the COVID. Uh, 19 times right now and I thought we could make a fun little when life gives you lemons make lemonade kind of thing but just paint the lemon so I'm going to just get this <laughs> I believe it's called lemon yellow um, and I'm going to get it pretty watery and lemons kind of have those little knobs on the end and then they kind of round out and I'm just making my nice and big for right now and then another little knob and I'm going to leave a little highlight in here even though my I'm going to add a lot more color to this um, by having that kind of pre-sketched pre out where that is where that highlight is it's going to give us some good areas to really shine a highlight. Okay, 
So you can see I've got it pretty much sketched out. I don't want to fill that in. My, if you need to adjust the drawing, you can just make it bigger. And then I'm going to get a little bit of this okra color from my palette right here and mix it in with the lemon yellow. And I'm going to just go a little bit around the edges. Not, I'm not painting it super even. And this is wet onto wet. So it's nice and um, it's gonna just kind of blend very subtly. I'm gonna dry a little bit of my paintbrush off and I'm gonna get my quinacridone gold, which is kind of a different yellow. And I'm gonna pull that in there. Just little touches and it's just going to, especially around the edges because you want that lemon yellow, the light lemon yellow to kind of be the highlight and the round part of your. And so we'll set that aside and let that dry. Actually, I am going to put just a little bit of a branch up here with the yellow just to kind of give it a, a start. Um, but we'll add some leaves and we'll have a little space down here to draw. So that is our third start. And then I thought we could do a fun, just floral kind of card that you can write any message on. Um, so I'm going to use my medium size paint paintbrush. It is a size six. Make sure it's nice and clean. And I'm gonna use some quinacridone violet which is a very pretty violet. I'm gonna put it, mix it. It's very bright, it's like a jewel tone. Um, and so I'm going to get that pretty light. You wanna start light with watercolor. So I'm gonna water it down. And it, it, I know I'm moving pretty fast here because you can pause this and come back. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw, and I don't know what kind of flower this is, I just, I've seen a bunch around. They're blooming right now here in Southwest Virginia. And this purple is a little bit, it's not as bright. And I'm gonna go out this way too. And my kids are home, so if you hear them come up, I apologize, it's just part of their day. <laughs> it's, um, and then I'm gonna kind of leave a space, but give it give a nice little start to uh, bud there. So, just to start. So this is just gonna be our first layer. And I'm gonna use some of that green from our first. I'm gonna actually mix a little bit of the yellow from our lemon in there. I'm going to draw a little stem. Now I'm not, I'm going just under that just so I don't um, blend my green and my purple. And, <coughs> excuse me, since I already have yellow on my palette, I'm going to do, go ahead and start with the kind of seed. So I'm just using the the stroke of my paintbrush but pushing down and I'm making kind of a bunch of dots. Now, once I kind of get down here, I am purposely getting some yellow and purple to blend. And I'm just gonna leave it there for now. We'll add some more color to that once we get the it, it drying a little bit. So right now we have kind of the four starts of our cards and we're gonna go back and we're gonna add, add to them. So it's always, I always like to have a few, at least two going on at any given time. So that way you can go back and forth. All right. So coming back to this one, since I've got yellow, I'm just going to put a little bit of yellow in here. It's going to be very subtle, but it'll give a little, little touch of happy in your flowers. And um, the other option could be like a brown. Um, but that's pretty. And then I'm going to use, since I already got this yellow and I'm kind of feeling the yellow today, I'm going to make some more 
thinking about it. I'm actually going to make some more like a bright green with that yellow. So it'll be like a lime. And I think I'm going to do some bigger, bigger leaves. So here's the side of one. I always like to kind of give a little um, split in between. So I'm going to do one coming up from over here. You can kind of play with them. So the thought is that these are just, I may even make that a little bit thinner. Just some fun larger leaves to get, add some more larger area um, paint. I'm gonna have to mix some more color up because I'm running new. And do one coming in from over here. I like that. Maybe even one in the corner. So I'm just trying to find a nice little balance of color um, so that the eye is not just drawn to one spot and one spot only. So I'm, I want to keep kind of the blues and teals um, oops, going with this. So I'm going to use some Prussian blue in this. I love me some Prussian blue. Um, I'm going to go with a nice... I'm gonna do like a little berry. It can be even a little blueberry. <laughs> so I'm gonna do some little blueberries. And they're just gonna have some little tops to them. And I think this will be cute. Berries are a fun way. I like the little highlight on that one. I need to, and you can overlap. You know, you could put something here on top of a leaf or something. Um, and another one. So I'm just adding some little fluff on there. And while it's still a little bit wet, I might go through and just add some darker, that might be a little too dark. Um, definition to some of these. It's okay if it's too dark, actually. I kind of like that. So I'm just going through the blueberries. You can put more than one together, too. Put a little purple on them. I have that purple. Actually, that's a good idea. Just a little touch of the quinacrinone. Kind of mixed it with my Prussian blue. That'll just give it a little different color. You know, I kind of said I was going to do blues and teals in here, but I like that purple. It's very, so it's like a blue violet, so it works. All right, and I think while I'm at it, I'm going to do a, another flower. And I think I'm going to go with a, like a yellow flower, like an okra yellow, kind of a subtly, a subtle yellow. So I might do some yellow roses in here. Roses are always fun. I need a little more color. Um, so I'm just going to do, to start with, a thin one. The good thing about these is you can make them as big or as small as you want. So I'm just kind of doing C's within C's. And then you can push down harder. You can use big brushes or little brushes. You can make these as tight or as loose as you want. I just like to do a little combination. So I'm probably going to fill these in lots of different places. And then I might come in with some quinacrinone. I cannot say that now. Quinacrinone gold and do um, some some depth additions to it just by having, having another color. And see, I'm going back and touching with some more color once I kind of get, get it drawn out. So very loose. You can see I'm holding my paintbrush further back, which is 
how I stay loose. When I'm tight like this, I, I, you know, when I'm close up, I'm a little bit tighter on the, the edge there. I choke up on my paintbrush, if you know, if you know about a, a baseball at all. So I'm just going through, and I like to do some on the edges. I try not to forget those. I can even kind of go behind my little blueberry or on top, just for fun. You can really kind of expand these out. Um, do a little one over here. And you can do a variety, you know, of styles with these. You can make them loose or tight. So while those are still a little bit wet, I think I am going to come through, get a little bit of a, a blue green I'm using Viridian and some of the mountain blue I had earlier. And I'm going to just do a little touch of some more petals coming out of here. And that's just going to give some more greenery. I could even go a little limer. Limer green here and there. And it's, we're kind of going for the whole effect of this. You know, it's not necessarily one focus. It's more of just... Um, Of, you know what's looking like what and you can even add some to these blue flowers I was just thinking I have some spaces around those and I'm just drawing it drawing it how I feel um you know it, it, you can overlap but the idea is to kind of fill in all your white space so that way when we pull off that tape it's clear where the white white area is so we're almost done with this one. This one's turning out really pretty. I'm excited about this one. So I'm going to do a little, I said I was going to do some qu qu quinacrinone gold. Um, so I've just lightened it up a little bit and I'm just pulling it in here. And it's just going to read a little more as yellow. It doesn't have to be a lot. It's just going to give, give those okra roses some more color. I just like, I like a little touch. You can even go beyond. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and pull that off. So just pull carefully. You can see the edge <laughs> where, be careful, because sometimes it does tear a little bit, but that's okay. We're going to work with this. Oop. So that will be a really neat area to put a little message in. So actually, after looking at this, I feel like my first flowers I painted need a little bit of Prussian blue in their center. So I'm gonna add, just to balance out those blueberries, we could have done maybe even a brown. But it's just gonna define, and so I'm just kind of dotting around the yellow a little bit. Can even almost circle around it. I don't know why, I just think that makes it look a little better. Since the tape's up, I've got to be a little more steady with my hand. I like that. I think it draws the attention. I like those blue flowers. That was kind of what I started with. So I wanted to re-highlight those. And then you can pick like a, a color to go in the middle. So I like that. I, I always... I try to start off with different blues because I always tend to be drawn to Prussian blue, but there's just, it's like navy and it's perfect. So you can write uh, thinking of you or happy birthday um, or miss you or anything like that. So I'm going to write thank you because I um, never have enough thank you cards. So I'm going to write, and you can always write this in pencil first. And I'm, I'm going to write THANK in all caps. And pencil's always a good idea, just so you make sure you have enough room. And then I'm going to do a little cursive U here. This is just like the perfect little postcard to send to a friend for doing for doing anything for you or 
you can always write thinking of you or miss you or well wishes or anything. Um, but I just love doing that tape and then kind of coming up with a different but that's really nice and soft. I like that soft color palette there. So now I'm going to pull back my mountains up. And I've got my little Prussian blue already. So I'm going to get that a little bit darker. And I'm just going to redefine some of those mountain peaks that I'd started off earlier. And then, now that it's dry, I can kind of come through and maybe use some of that other blue. you can even use a bigger paintbrush at this point. That'll just blend it in. You can maybe even use less white. Not now. I meant to do this first, but put a little more into there too. So, a little white, but not a ton. So I'm gonna let that dry a little more and we'll do more. Um, I'm going to Pull this one out and I'm going to get my quinacridone gold and I'm going to mix a little bit of a red. Any red will work. I think I actually have quinacridone red and so it's going to still be mostly purple but I'm going to just define those edges on this a little bit more. I'm going to put a little and uh, so I'm kind of, what I'm doing is I'm laying the edges down first, and then I'm going to add water and see what that does. So I'm kind of just redefining the petals in here, and then I'm going to add water after the fact. So I've got quite a bit of color on my paintbrush. And I like to get a little bit, so I'm getting some vermilion red. I haven't washed my paintbrush off in purple and I'm just gonna add a little bit of that in here. So it's a, whatever looks closest to orange on your palette, or red and yellow, you can mix together. So now I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush off and get some pure water and just kind of touch into that red, the quinacridone purple and, and red that I did earlier. I might have to get a little more color on my brush just to give it that Definition. Oops. You know what I might do is actually make some petals underneath. <laughs> Since I had a boo boo, I'm rolling with it. That's the beauty of art. If you have a mistake, you can usually fix it. So, I might even do some little pink in there. So this is a pretty simple one, but sometimes simple is really all you need. And you could do more of these flowers everywhere. I just like this. So I'm gonna write thinking of you on this one and I'm gonna do it, I think I'm gonna do it in a, the vermilion red with a little, little bit of whatever kind of pinky hue I can find here. And I'm gonna write thinking. Of, and I'll do my little cursive view. <laughs> Might even make this one a little extra loop de loop de. So I always thicken up the downstroke. It'll So there you go. And I think I got a little pencil mark on there from just rearranging things. So I like that. And I could even add some of that red. Oh, I like this. So I'm adding a little bit of that red that was on my paintbrush into the flower. And I think that adds something extra to it. Very pretty. All right. So that's a nice little postcard you can send to someone. So... Now back to our lemon, I am going to do a little um, brown, burnt sienna I think is what I have here, or burnt umber, either one, or a combination of the two, 
on this to kind of give the stem and let a little bit of that show through and then we'll rinse my paintbrush off and I'm gonna get a pretty oops I didn't we'll rinse it off good enough I got brown and my yellow I'm gonna clean my little area out if you <clears throat> I'm gonna move this down a little bit I'm gonna get my lemon yellow again and then I'm gonna get some uh burning green and that's gonna be my base for this leaf and I am going to draw one kind of coming down here. You can always go bigger. And one kind of coming up. Lemon leaves kind of go all sorts of different directions. And another one kind of coming over here. So I'm just pressing with my paintbrush to give it a funky stroke. And I can always get more color in there after the fact. This one might even go off. And then I'm going to use some blue to add in there. I think this is, I'm just using the blue from my mountains because I haven't washed really anything off. It's just going to give the hint of leaves. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I can always come back and touch up on that. In fact, I'm going to rinse my paintbrush off and get a little more um, of my quinacridone gold and put that in here. And if you get your quinacridone gold pretty lightened up with water, it just makes a really pretty color. So I'm just trying to add a little bit more layer on there. And then kind of blend it in with a wet paintbrush. So I kind of laid down the color and then I'm blending it. And it just defines your, your shadows a little bit more and now that that's dry just a smidgen I can come back in maybe with some pure accordion green just kind of give it some fun little dark spots too you could even just do more blue blue's gonna kind of make it look like it's receding anyway and so then you've got this nice little tropical thing and you can just Right when life gives you lemons um, or anything, you don't have to. This could be a pretty little thing to frame and hang up too. So I'm gonna use lime green. I like that color for this. And I'm gonna just write in a little pretty script. You could always just do this in Sharpie because painting words is hard. When, and I'm gonna do, I like to com combine capital letters and lowercase. Gives. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> you can always, if it's too light or something, you can make it darker. But I'm going to go through and make all my down strokes a little bit thicker. Just gives it that nice hand lettered look. But I kind of like that it's lighter. So I'm going to leave it like that. So another one down. Yay. So now we just have our mountains. And I am going to mix a nice darker blue. So I'm mixing some of the, the first blue I had. I, gosh, I need to look at my colors and see what color that is. I cannot think. And then my Prussian blue. And then I'm going to make me some peaks of mountains. Oh, I was like, what is that? Or someone's mowing their lawn next to us. Doesn't have to be anything super great. Yeah, I like that. Once I got my mountain range kind of done, I can come through and use the colors. The idea is to kind of use darker colors towards the edges there, and then they can get really light. And actually, I think I went a little darker than I was originally planning on on these. 
So I'm gonna kind of lighten that up with paper towel. And I'm just gonna leave those peaks dark. Oops, draw a line, just make it work. <laughs> so I'm just mixing some more color in here. It doesn't have to be a lot. I kind of wanted it to be really misty looking mountains. So when it gets down to this again, you can really lighten up your watercolors to be just water. And it's just like a neat little mountain range. You can write, you know, little peaceful quotes on the back side of it or on top of it. Um, I'd have to look up a mountain quote. <laughs> Something like, take me to the mountains. I can even get a different paintbrush and define some of those edges a little more. You know, while it's still wet. Just kind of to give some of that definition. I like this. If it's already too dry, you can always wet it in general. But I like that. I think that's a neat fun, fun way to do things. Um, so very simple, but that's your four cards. I'm going to have to edit this video together since I got phone called here. Let me see if I can put them next to each other, but great way, especially nowadays where you just don't have a lot of, um, you don't want to go to the store first off to buy things. And second off, you're not having a lot of contact. So it's just a really nice way to tell your friends you're thinking of them or family or a thank you or whatever. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, of course, you can make donations to www.chestnutcreekarts.org if you enjoyed this class and uh, backslash donate or you can click on the donate tab. Um, thank you for joining. We're going to be doing sharing classes every week. So we hope you'll come back and check out our subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a great day. Bye.